Well, I believe that we all have a responsibility, not only for ourselves, but for future generations to keep the momentum going, continuing to make progress and not letting up. Right. So right. if you if you let me say, hey, uh, Kim and Aries, we're going to film the podcast on Sunday and then I don't show up. Right. Then you let me do that. Right. You you have to hold people accountable. You have to make sure that they have metrics. You have to make sure that they have not only this diversity statement, but they're putting resources behind it. You know, that's people, that's money, right? Um, they are invested, you know, make sure that the leaders are invested, make sure that everyone's getting training, make sure that there are constant updates, right? I would ask the question, hey, we haven't received an update in a while. Can you give me, you know, some information on the progress that's been made since the original Black Lives Matter statement, right? Like ask the question. There is no harm in asking the question. And then with COVID, you know, we're all working from home. So you get to peek inside our houses. Exactly. Our kids. So it's even more intimate and personal. Yeah. I mean, kids are at work now. Pets are at work um, because you're sharing your personal space yes. with now your professional work. Everybody's at home, right? Shelter in place. So you can't get around looking in people's background and going, what's the books back there? What you reading, right? <laughs> right. What's that picture? Oh, she right. real black. Look, that's black art. Right? <laughs> like there's things now that you just can't escape and get away from. The other thing that I would say uh, to both of you and to everyone that, you know, listens to the podcast is when I started, I actually had a recruiter to say to me, you know, you'll probably get more jobs if you take your name off your resume, LaToya, because it's black and just put LT, right? And I have never in my life thought about taking my name off of my resume because that was the first gift I got from my mother. Exactly. My and so um, it's a funny story. She was in a black hair salon under the hair dryer, as most black women are, with her rollers in her hair in the <laughs> 70s. And she needed to name this baby. And so she was reading a Jet magazine. And I actually got my name from Jet magazine. The cover story was the Jackson 5. And so I am named after LaToya Jackson. Oh, wow. And my middle name came from the top 10 songs in the back cover of the book, The Captain and Tennille, Love Will Keep Us Together. So I'm LaToya Tennille. Oh, that wow. Because that was my first gift from her. I have a connection to that name. I am that name. That is a part of my persona. And so I have never thought about taking my name off of my resume. So you know, when you interview me, that there's a high probability that I am a minority based on my name and the fact that there are not many people who are white who have <laughs> the first name LaToya. So for me, what I'm seeing, again, is this migration of now um, companies being more accepting and inclusive of your culture and asking and wanting to know what do you celebrate and what's important to you and making changes in vacation time and flex hours and other things to accommodate for religious holidays and cultural norms that are not of white dominant cultures. Wow. And I love it. I'm all for the inclusivity. Um, and that's actually a value that I look for when I went to a, to this company is, is it an inclusive culture? Like truly, do they act it out? Because a lot of times, um, kind of going back to what we said, they've made statements, right? Yes. We've made statements that, oh, we support Black, Life, Ma Black Lives Matter. Tell me now, how do we hold our companies accountable for the statements that they've said in terms of we support Black Lives Matter and this whole 
um, political un, un I'm not going to say political. Yes, unrest. How do think, how can we as employees hold them accountable? Yeah, I think that's a good question, uh, Kim. I think the best thing that you can do is keep the momentum going. Right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that notion that we all know closed mouths don't get fed. Right. Okay. If you let them say it and do nothing, it's your fault. Mm. So I believe that we all have a responsibility, not only for ourselves, but for future generations to keep the momentum going, continuing to make progress and not letting up. Right. So right. if you if you let me say, hey, uh, Kim and Aries, we're going to film the podcast on Sunday and then I don't show up. Right. Then you let me do that. Right. You you have to hold people accountable. You have to make sure that they have metrics. You have to make sure that they have not only this diversity statement, but they're putting resources behind it. You know, that's people. That's money. Right. Um, they are invested you know, make sure that the leaders are invested, make sure that everyone's getting training, make sure that there are constant updates, right? I would ask the question, hey, we haven't received an update in a while. Can you give me, you know, some information on the progress that's been made since the original Black Lives Matter statement, right? Like ask the question. There is no harm in asking the question. And then um, volunteering, like, I don't think it's enough just to ask. You have to be a part of the movement. Don't right. just sit and wait for people to serve you, right? Because then you get stuff you don't want to eat. And so I like if to eat you're good. a part of the process, yes. then you're able to make sure that your needs are being met. So for me, um, when the question was asked to me in my role, to give a little bit more context on my role, so what uh, the way that the role started was an opportunity to lead a team of Black employees to investigate and understand the Black employee experience. So when I got the call and asked if I would lead, I said, absolutely. This, it was specifically asked, regarding the black yes. employees okay yes and my answer was an absolute yes because I can't hold you accountable and not be in the kitchen while you're making this meal right correct um, I have to invest and for me that is maybe a difference than other people that you'll hear speak um, yeah ask the question but also jump in it like get into the creation of the programs, the strategy, the measures, the goals, um, get into the data, interview the employees, like know what's going on. Don't just wait to be served because then you don't know what you're going to get at the end. Or if people opt out, then it's done, right? So always opt in. You have to opt in for Black people because you're Black, yeah. Right. Number one, um, I want all black people to do well. And I get it from all ends. Right. I'm too black for the people at the top and I'm not black enough for the people at the bottom and the people in the middle don't know. Right. <laughs> um, so what I say is I opt in. I opt in for myself. I opt in for Jade and Kennedy, my daughters, so right. that they don't have to opt in when it's time for them to work. And every other black person, whether they're an employee at Intuit or not, I opt in because if we don't, nobody's going to opt in nobody's, for us, yeah. right? Then you're at the mercy of what's given to you versus creating for yourself. So you got to jump in with both feet and both arms and learn as you go. I hear a couple things. So it's kind of like with politics, right? We, we vote, right, for these people and then we keep on going and never go back. Right. We don't look back to see if they're doing what we hired them for, what we mm -hmm. voted for them for. Right. Which is kind of a part of the political process, you know, making sure how am I? Well, I voted. You said you were going to do this. That's why I put your name in the hat. I need to make sure you're doing this. So yes. that is following up on your kind of duty to vote. So it kind of reminded me of that as you're saying that. Also, for me personally, knowing that I will not like what was cooked. I need to, <laughs> if it's not, like, I'd rather be involved so I can be like, mm -mm -mm, I don't like Add more much. onions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So for me, if I know that my expectation is that I want it to be an excellent meal and I know that I'm really good at cooking, <laughs> I want to make sure that I got to put a little bit of my input so that I'm not going to automatically be upset, you know, at the end result. Because it's like nobody contributed who could have told the people 
hey, and now we actually, have this slop. <laughs> you should put some you more sugar it. in this. Yeah, you, you know, got so it. It's the I same like thing with your career, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not advocating for yourself and you're allowing other people to tell your story, they might leave some of the good parts out, right? Yeah. So um, I think it plays the same when you look at companies who are doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work. If for whatever reason you decide you're not ready to jump in with both feet and both arms like I described, then don't turn your head, right? Keep asking questions, give your input, make recommendations, give ideas, share articles, share videos, like let them know you still care because if you don't, then they go, well, nobody else is calling us. So we don't put that aside. Right. You know, we don't really have to be held accountable for the stuff that we said, because they're not asked, they don't care, right? They're, they're not asking for anything. Everybody's good. Everybody's happy. You know, no, you know, squeaky wheels. I don't have any. So they go on to the next thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to make sure that you create this regular cadence of information flow. You're actively involved. Get in and contribute versus sitting on the sidelines and waiting for people to serve you because that's when expectations are always missed, right? Yeah. You want the 13 course meal and they give you chicken nuggets. <laughs> because well, they don't meal. know, right? Right. And they go, hey, we did some research and nuggets was what it was, right? Versus you actually contributing in the process, doing interviews, getting data, working with experts, reaching out to other people in the field, you know, and figuring out what the right thing is to do. And maybe, you know, you started with an expectation of 13 courses and it's really more like six, right? But if you're not involved, you have no way of having access to the information and the data and influencing what the outcome is. So jump in. Be part of the change. Yes. I love it. This is good. This is very good. This and is so good. <laughs> so yeah. you're a coach. Um, yes. Reach out to LaToya. Certified. This right, Certified. This right here is just great nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> nuggets mm -hmm. for the beginning or i like to say i'm not even gonna say nuggets these are gems yeah these are gems sure. that for you sure. are dropping so thank you uh Absolutely. we have a, we have a few more questions but we're like almost at an hour yeah. already well wait, wait wait okay we got to talk about where the money resides okay, let's <laughs> do it let's do it <laughs> so real quick well, and, and yes we do we had we got to end it at some point so okay um and we'll we might have to bring you back we'll just okay see how that goes so um Finances. You mentioned how, you know, some people are being more transparent, you know, and we've done things for like uh, Black Women's Equal Pay Day or just Women's Equal Pay Day. We got every equal pay day there is um, because there is um, a known issue of women getting paid less. Um, yes. And even as we break it down ethnically, Black it women. gets worse, worse and worse You know, yes. as we go down. We didn't even get yes. to the Native American, you know, right. we, it's a right. whole nother level. So how can we really prevent, and we've had people on talking about negotiations and things like that, but from, from your perspective, um, when it comes to salary benefits, like there's so much to it. Like what, are, what's kind of your thoughts on a strategy on how we can make sure we're not being underpaid and we are doing, get, doing ourselves justice by doing the proper amount of getting the proper amount of education on what should we should be getting, you know, in these different roles. Right. Not being overworked and underpaid. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a couple of things. The first thing I'll say is you need data. Mm -hmm. Like you need to know what other people are making who are in the same role that you're in. There is uh, something called the World Wide Web and the Internet, <laughs> um, and a lot of people use different search engines and websites. However, um, there is way too much information uh, at your fingertips where you can find out what people are making. So I encourage you to use the Internet and get information, industry information, specific to the industry that you're working in. 
you'll get a range, right, a number. Um, then you know what you're currently making. Then you, you know, there's a lot of sites out there out there also that have a equation that you can use to determine your value, right? Your skills, your degrees all have a certain uh, factor, if you will, and then you add these things up, your um, location, DFW market, et cetera, pay versus California versus East Coast, right? Um, all of those factors go into what the um, industry will say your value is, right? But the, the real deal on pay is all of that is great. You know, there's a ton of people out there and know your worth, know your worth, right? Mm -hmm. Know your worth, sis, know your worth, right? <laughs> um, it's great. Yes, that's the start of it. But you also need to know what your company is willing to pay you, and that is based on how you contribute, right? So there's a range for every role. Um, you need more information on your company is what I encourage people to do. So external research and knowing your value in the market is one thing, but that doesn't mean anything inside your employer. You need to know the compensation philosophy of your company, you need to know the compensation process, and then you need to understand what is budgeted for the role and what your company is willing to pay for that skill set. That's where you're at, that's the data that helps you change the compensation conversation, right? So if you say to me, and I'm an HR professional, right? If you say to me, I did my equation because everybody comes in, right? They had their spreadsheet, they have their piece of paper. <laughs> ooh, 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 I know my worth. I'm worth $8 million, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever the number is, right? They get this number in their head based on their experience, based on their on the job training. They've watched all the podcasts. They know all the buzzwords and they throw their number out. Right. But that doesn't mean anything if that number is not within the range of what your company has set for the role. Right. And those ranges differ on industry level, et cetera. So um, that's the piece I think most people are missing when they start talking about com compensation and wanting to move the needle oh I feel like I'm underpaid you know or you have a mishap right you're right. when we were back in the office somebody left their promotion increase on the copier and you see it and it's not the same money you're making and now you're you know hell-bent on getting that number right because that's the number you should have because it's the same role and all this other type of stuff right you get you go right back in your feelings like we were at the beginning of this hour right when I shared <laughs> that story yes so what I tell people is it's great to know your value but you need also insight on the company where you're trying to get more money the compensation philosophy do they you know make changes in comp only once a year and is that tied to performance what's the approval process like right to get more compensation because there may only be so much money that your immediate manager can give you and the rest may have to come from their manager or it may have to go through hr or finance depending upon your company so you need to know the process and the philosophy some companies have a philosophy of i don't pay you until until you contribute, right? And if you're not contributing, then your paycheck is what it is, right? So you need to understand those levers and factors before you go in and have this conversation to try to get more money. What's happening in the company is more important than that external data from any of the amazing websites that are out there that can give you all these nuggets. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is, that is very good. <sighs> we got homework that's to do. a lot <laughs> everybody listening y'all got homework to do really if you are if I had known this these unwritten rules i would have chosen better too right in oh terms absolutely of companies and so and now it's yes kim that's why i share them because when you know you. better you do better right so you now you know better. right instead of just having that external value you need to start understanding what's happening inside the company so now you're going to go and figure out what the compensation philosophy is. And you're going to ask your manager, like, how do changes in pay happen, right? And they'll explain the process to you or what have you. So I think people want to move quick, right? So you get mad, you get in your feelings, you practice in your mirror or whatever you need to do. And then you go in the office, guns blazing, ready to rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, right? 300,000. 
Yeah. And then you go and have a conversation and they send you back to square one, right? Because you're not ready because you've done all the external and you haven't even understood what the process is in your company. And every company is unique. So as I'm coaching people, I ask the questions, what's the compensation philosophy? And they start looking at me. I don't know. (laughs) Okay. Well, I can't coach you if you can't tell me what the rules of the game are, because you don't make compensation up just one day. Like these are institutions. These rules have been there for 30 years. They may have been updated or tweaked, but you don't just decide what the compensation strategy is on a Wednesday, right? So go and find that out. And then I don't want to waste your money on coaching. Then come back when you have those answers so we can put this strategic plan together and we can do the assessment to determine if you can really get some money. Wow. You have just said a word. You have served us a, a, a meal. Yes, a good one, a good one. Because I think that if somebody who is listening to this today can glean anything, they can glean like, okay, you know what? I need a plan. I need to do some research (laughs) to create that plan. You got to get the data. You got to go back there, get all the information that you need. Where am I going? Is it going to be within this company? Is it outside of this company? If it is, then I need a plan for that. I need to have all these things in place. And so we don't just put our career in anybody's hands. You know, it I needs think to be in your hands. You care for your yourself hands. more than anybody else. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like we were talking about what mama never told you, because like back in the day when our parents were working at their jobs, whether they were corporate or not, it probably the philosophy was so different back then. It's oh, like you go get you a good, stable job and you stay there for 35 yes. years. That's you know, it. And that's, that's what it. my mother told me. Work hard. <laughs> Stay there, get a pension or a retirement, yep. and then mm-hmm. get out and do whatever you want, right? Exactly. But until then, you work hard, hard, hard for 30 years, 35 years, 40, whatever the number is, right? And then you, because of that, you have this retirement or this pension, mm-hmm. and you you go, right? So when I started making moves from other companies, when my mother was alive, she was nervous. She was like, why are exactly. you leaving? What are you doing? <laughs> you find somewhere, you stay there, you figure it out you there for 30 years what are you doing what are people going to say about you if you keep moving right because my first four years I was in three different companies and she was about to have a heart attack you know that's my mom that's my mom and my my dad 36 years in the school system right my dad worked the same job for 30 plus years that's just (laughs) what you did when you were coming up in that generation and I started moving and she was like lord this girl's gonna come back home and live with us (laughs) she don't have her stuff together yeah you know everybody at church is praying for me to get my life together (laughs) because I'm moving and and doing all kinds of stuff you know but now it's look at you it's the norm to see seven moves on a resume and people Mm -hmm. creating that story of you know I was looking for this experience or I wanted this opportunity or I needed this skill set and it makes sense but had you you know if you say that to my aunt she's gonna be like lord this child ain't never gonna make no money (laughs) she's never gonna have her life together we're gonna have to keep you know we gotta sell dinners we gotta do something to help her out right sell dinners (laughs) but now it's totally different you know, exactly. so it's okay to move, make smart moves. Don't just move for the sake of moving. And when your heart and your intuition and your body tells you it's time to go, then start putting a plan together so you can go before your body says, get out now, right? Yes. Like, listen, when it starts saying, hey, we need to look at something else, then start looking it's okay to leave. It's all right. But make sure that you're asking all the right questions and you're interviewing those companies just as much as they're interviewing you so that you land in a better spot every time. That's the magic in it. Not out of desperation. Right. Mm. That's a bad place. I've been there and it's not it's not a good look. No. Um, well, we thank you so much yes. because, I mean, we like we always say, we can do this for days because um, <laughs> it's just, you're just a wealth of knowledge. Um, we, we, we know that people have gotten 
some good stuff out of this. Um, where would you prefer? Because we know people are going to hit us up and be like, um, we need her information. Her. Where do you prefer people to reach out to you? I'm everywhere in all the spaces as Latoya Haynes. So find me, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. It's all the same. Twitter, <laughs> it's all the same. So reach out to me. Always happy to help anybody who's looking for um, help and happy to just have the conversation and continue to educate and watch people just blow up and take over. So yeah, I am I super excited this. to be here. Thank you all so much for having me and um, giving me the opportunity to share some knowledge. So I appreciate you. And we're glad to have you oh as our first Bold Black Girl of the Month for 2021. So we go, we kicking it off with that right attack. We, we <laughs> kicked it off, and it's the beginning of the year, so we can now take this back, right? Because there are people who want new jobs, people who yes. want to thrive. Because yes. you talked about surviving, we want to yes. thrive in our roles um, where we are now, and this is great. Like I'm taking notes over here. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> And I'm going to take some of your, I'm going to take all of your nuggets back yes. and do my own. Take thing. them all back. And what I tell you is the question that I ask myself every time anybody calls me and asks me to do anything is if not me, then who? If mm. you can't come up with another name, step boldly into those spaces and kill it every time you get in them. So Bam. ask yourself that question. And if you can't come up with another name, that's your spot. And do I it. love that. I'm writing this down. This is a call to action. Step that's boldly. right. If not me, then who? If a name doesn't come up quick, that's your spot. Go get it. I love it. All right. Well, we'll talk to you next week, girl. Um, Thank you. <laughs> look, when we call you. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer the phone. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us, and we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> all right kim we just got all of the gems all the nuggets all the whatever you want to call them so oh, the um what i know you were over here taking notes she's <laughs> over here <clears throat> i'm like what is our call to action i feel like we got a lot so. there are but if i there were tons of called uh tons of nuggets but if i had to sum it up i would say one is a strategic plan mm. especially as we go into this new year mm. Get your strategic plan in place, right? Whether you're in your current role or you're planning for a new role, you need to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Yes. Right? So, for instance, example, when we both were interviewing a year ago, you kicked it off with this presentation that you use. I use that. And so now I'm sharing with my friends, have a presentation ready so you don't even have to think about it, right? So true. At least have a template or or an um, outline of what you're going to talk about. But mm -hmm. start getting that together now. So when you have that interview, you're like, okay, I already have this. I don't even have to worry about this. Yes. Minor little tweaks. And so basically, and this is something that I've done as I prepare for my interview is do a SWAT. What are your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats? Um, then if you're in your current role today and you're looking to move to another role, go use that continuing education to upskill mm -hmm. for whatever skill you need for that new job. And a lot of times we don't use it. We fail to use it. I'm guilty. I'm holding myself accountable in 2021 to use that money. Use the money. <laughs> what are, where does the money reside? Yes. <laughs> All right. And then one of the things that she said that I really love is leave it better than you received it. Mm -hmm. Right. You need two monumental um, things that you need to do in your current role to show your value. Mm -hmm. So making sure you, you do that, that's one of the call to actions. Mm -hmm. Other things that we don't do as Black women, I believe we don't self-promote. Yeah. So that could be using what I did before is create a presentation to show the value that I, I bring. Mm -hmm. Quantify it um, so that they can see. And don't be afraid to say, these are the contributions that I've made. It's it's imperative. Mm -hmm. You have to because nobody else is doing it. And sometimes you can forget. Like now we're at the point where I got to go back now and do um, we're going through performance evaluations um, where you got to go in and put all your stuff. And I'm like, OK, like I got to go back and look if you don't take notes or don't see that you're going to forget yourself you will. and you won't know how to speak up, you know, about the things that you've done. So mm -hmm. definitely I'm with you on that one. And one of the things that I've done in the past and I need to refresh and do this year is document weekly what you've done 
And that way, when you get ready to do that PDR, you can just go back to your weekly. It's like your own personal weekly status. Mm -hmm. Yep. Weekly status. Yep. Your own internal. And then last but not least, when you are looking to go where the money resides, where the money resides, where the money resides, you need to do your research. Data, metrics, right? Researching the company. One of the things that Latoya said is knowing their philosophy. And I never really even thought about that. Yeah. What is their company philosophy? And then what is the compensation process? Um, every company is very different. I know some companies will reveal the range to you mm-hmm. up front, um, where others really are just kind of looking to see what you are going to say. Um, but I would also just say, just making sure you do that research. And if you don't know, for, let's say you are going for something in your company and you just don't have the relationships to, you, everybody doesn't feel comfortable asking somebody else how much, how much money you make, how are you going to know, right? If it's not that open, then you can still use those glass door and salary.com and all that, because that's from somebody up in the company, you know, that might be in a role that's similar, um, it may not be exact, but at least you'll get an idea of like, okay, let me see what director roles people said, you know, what they said they were making in these director roles. It might be a big range, but at least you'll know, you know, a little bit more on um, kind of where to start and yes. then use your experience and all that to add to it. But yes, research, research, research. I'll be on all the websites. Like, let me just see. Yeah. And some, if you have a LinkedIn premium I want to say some of the roles you are able to see the salary range, mm-hmm, the compensation for that estimate. title, yes, an mm-hmm. estimate, and it gives you a range, so that's good. And then, last but not least, I think the bonus is it's. She said, "If not me, then who?" Right? We have to have that mentality and that mindset that you need to step boldly into those places, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where that boldness, come on, bold black girl, um, comes into place, <laughs> right? We we can't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Be bold and courageous. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. It is scary. You know, that's the part I think, especially when it comes to negotiating and, and, and saying, this is what I feel that I deserve and that I need to do. Um, but you got to be able to articulate what you're bringing to the table. It's not just like, because I'm awesome. No, it needs to be specifics. It needs to be able, you need to be able to bullet point that and say, this is why, because of this experience, because of this, because of that, and have you some people that are willing to speak up for you, have those sponsors, have those mentors, have those people who, when you're not in the rooms, they are speaking your name, you know, and validating that experience for you. So you got to be strategic. You got to make sure you tell the right people what you've been working on. So that when those conversations come up, they know to say that. And then you got three people saying, yeah, and this, this, and this, you know, you got three different people saying your name. So, um, yeah, she gave us a lot of homework. I mean, even to the fact that this one last one that really stood out to me that I should have brought up when you go into a role, have an idea of the next role. That that was a good one. That was a very, and I don't think we look or think that far ahead, but we need to be thinking like that. Um, and if you don't know, at least have an idea of what, not set, not the role, but maybe the type of work that you want to do. Yes. Or where you want to, where do you, where does this role, where do you take want to take you? Exactly. Yes. I love it. All right. Well, as always, um, please rate and review the episode. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. We noticed that we got people that be watching us and they're not subscribed. We're going to need you to subscribe. Um, and check us out. We got a lot of good stuff coming up this season. Um, and we want to hear back from you. So make sure you email us. We, we got a new email address. Um, so go check us out on boldblackgirls.com. Um, subscribe to our newsletter. We're going to be fixing that up pretty soon. So we need you to be there. So we know what to send you. And also um, shoot us an email at hello at boldblackgirls.com. And we will, um, if you have suggestions for Bold Black Girls of the Month, topics, topics, things like that, um, we would love to hear your feedback. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please make sure to write us a nice little review. So we just know you're listening and, and this is actually feeding you. All righty. Thank you for tuning in. 
Happy New Year. And have a bold week. We'll see you next time.